absolutely not. Now I see all of your faces. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so it's been a while since I've been up here um, in this particular form. Like my wife said, we uh, last year lost our home in a fire. Um, and we really hit a bottom that we didn't really ever see before. Whenever my wife and I got together, we were in a pretty different situation. <laughs> Had a home, started our life, kind of got to hit the ground running pretty smoothly. So going from having everything to just having us, um, it's amazing how God has just provided for us. That's all I can say. Anything that we needed and everything that we needed, we got provided for us this year. And I thank God for that. Um, I also want you to know that I try to try to take this as serious as life and death. You're behind a pulpit or behind a microphone and you're speaking to people. I want the Lord to lead me in what to say because it's not by my power, not by my words, not by the music or the guitar that's going to be played later that leads people's hearts to Christ. It's only by the power of God. So I try to let him speak through me, and I was wondering, my testimony, as my mentor told me before he passed away, I need to write a book. <laughs> the things that I've been through in my life, starting out as a child, that I have hindsight on now, is, has really developed the, the ministry that my wife and I have, and taking an innocent child such as like Noah and the things that I had to go through broke me down pretty bad that it led my life into a rebellious stage of uh, drugs and alcohol and um, pretty much anything that ended up starting to be self-willed. I just wanted to make myself happy because no one else was going to make me happy. And God showed me later in life on how much he was there with me during those times even though I thought he wasn't and whenever I got saved it was actually my wife that led me to the Lord um, we were starting to see each other and the night before I got saved I left and I came back from a day of using drugs and she asked me a question that no one else asked me ever in my life, which was why. And all the spirit fell on me and I started crying and I felt the conviction of Christ. And that night we prayed and I've been clean off of drugs for over 19 years now. Amen. So with that, that's like my first testimony because my testimony is not over yet. In this life, we're going to go through things and different stages in our life. And I believe that our testimony is always growing. And the second part is whenever my wife and I first got together, our ministry started about six months into our marriage. We were led to by our pastors asked to teach children's church. And at the time, I think the children's church had about three kids. And we started that ministry for was about seven years and grew from three kids to about 21 kids per week. And God used that ministry. It's really funny to be able to say hindsight a lot. <laughs> But in hindsight, again, my wife and I, um, in that ministry, got really close with the kids. And they have grown up and have their own kids now. And one of the things that God has worked in our lives in this is that Noah, that is with us now, is actually adopted. And one of the girls that was in our children's church 
um, ended up having an unexpected pregnancy. She went to the hospital, found out she had a blood clot while she was on birth control and found out she was also pregnant. And she called my wife and I and uh, basically told us that we were the only option for Noah. And without hesitation, my wife and I accepted what God was gonna do for us. And the reason I think that God did it for us was my wife and I just bought a house. We had some money put up to fix the house. And we didn't really, really ever think about adoption. And we didn't really think we were gonna have the money to adopt because a lot of people say that, you know, adoption is expensive. Everything that we needed for Noah throughout the entire time, background checks, investigators that we had to hire, lawyers we had to get, everything that we needed somehow, some way through God, it was there. Um, at the end of the adoption, our lawyer actually contacted us and he was had his bill and we were ready to start paying that and he said, I can't waive all the fees because I work for other people, but he waived all of his fees. So we only had the company's fees from that. And that was a really big blessing for us. And the reason I'm sharing this is because Noah is now part of our testimony. Yes, the things is. God can do with you in your life unexpectedly. And I believe Noah here will be behind one of these one day too. So that's why he's always up here. <laughs> Sorry. I also wanted to, I had it on my heart to share something with you guys. Because like I said, my testimony, I was having a really hard time nailing it down. Because it is... I believe in my eyes so vast, it would take a while for me to give all of my testimonies that I have. I'm thankful for God being in my life and the things he has done for me, the things that I should not have walked away from, um, that he has allowed his grace to keep me alive and to pursue the ministry that we have. But the best thing that I can do is try to take the focus off of me and put it on the one that really matters, which is Jesus. And I wanted to share this because this is kind of my testimony too. Any answer or any problem that you have in any way, there's only one answer to it, and that's Jesus Christ. Yes. But I want to tell you a little bit about my king. But a man from the 1970s named Dr. S. M. Lockridge did a sermon. And this is part of his sermon that really stuck out to me. And he's talking about King Jesus. He said, that's my king. A king was born a king. The Bible said he's a seven ways king. He's king of the Jews. He's king of Israel. He's king of righteousness. He's the king of ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. And he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you know him. Do you know him today? David mm -hmm. said, heaven declares the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. My king is the only one whom there are no means of measure can define his limitless love. No far-seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shores of supply. No boundaries can hinder him from pouring out his blessings. He's, en he's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally gra graceful. He's, in sorry. he's imperially perfect. He's impartially merciful. That's my king. He's God's son. He's the sinner's savior 
and the centerpiece of civilization. He stands alone in himself. He's honest. He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's supreme. He's preeminent. He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the supreme problem in high criticism. He's the fundamental doctrine of proven theology. He's the cardinal necessity of the spiritual religion. That's my king. He's the miracle of ages. He's the He's the only one able to supply all of our needs simultaneously. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He's strong and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the leopards. He forgives the sinner. He discharges the debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young, he serves the unfortunate, and regards the aged. He rewards the diligent, and he beautifies the meek. My king is the king of knowledge. He is the wellspring of wisdom. He is the doorway of deliverance. He is the pathway of peace. And he is the roadway to righteousness. He is the highway of holiness. He is the gateway of glory. He's the master of the mighty. He's the captain of the conquerors. He's the head of the heroes. He's the leader of the legislators. He's the overseer of the overcomers. He's the governor of governors and the princes of peace. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. That's my king. His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His light is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his bird is light. Well, I wish I could describe him to you, but he's indescribable. Yes, he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible and he's irresistible. I'm coming to tell you the heavens of heavens can't contain him and let alone a man explain him. You can't get him off of your mind. You can't get him off of your hands. You can't live without him. You can't live with, you can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stop him, but they found, <clears throat> sorry, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. He always has been. And he always will be. I'm talking about he has no predecessor. And he will have no successor. There's nobody before him. And there's nobody after him. You can't impeach him. And he's not going to resign. That's my kingdom. In today's world, where we try to chase prestige and honor and glory for ourselves, but all the glory is his. My testimony, as much as it is, is mine, to say the least. Everything that I've been through in my life good and bad everything that I've received all the glory goes to him so my testimony today is not about where I came from what I've been through what I'm going to go through my testimony today is Jesus is king he always is always was and always will be Amen. And I hope that my life testifies about him. Thank you for your time. I am too nervous up here. <laughs> I'm going to give you to a guy that does much, much better than I actually think Samantha's going to introduce yes, us. I'm going to invite Samantha up here to introduce him.